Hi friends, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. So today's lesson on the long arm, we are working with panels. Well, just one, not plural. There's one on the long arm. <laughs> and I'm going to show you why I loaded and am quilting my panel the way I loaded and am quilting my panel. So let's take a look at this panel. So this is a Jack Skellington panel, obviously, as you can tell. <laughs> And it is loaded sideways. So it is loaded horizontally because that's the way every quilt gets loaded no matter what on the long arm. Just kidding. Anyway, so why did I choose to load my panel sideways? First things first, all panels are not created equal and not all designs are elongated as the panel I am working with. Some panels out there are sideways like this, but the picture goes up and down. So why did I load it sideways? Well, first things first, my machine head, this thing right here, my machine, has only an 18 inch throat space. That's the space between the needle and the back of the machine. There's only 18 inches there. So that gives me not very much between this bar that my finger is pointing at and that back bar that my finger is pointing at. There, I have about 20 inches of space, but that's not quiltable space. That's just 20 inches of loadable space. The next thing is, in this space that I have, if I would have loaded this specific panel the opposite direction, so vertical, the way the picture is, if I would have loaded this panel, if you see all these continuous lines, do you notice that there's more than 18 inches between here and here and between here and here and so on and so forth? So this direction right here allows me to not have as many thread breaks. That way I can continuously quilt from here down to there. So all the little decorative stuff and all that is in a long position so I can go around all those sections while I am in this position right here. If I would have loaded it the other way, I would quilt from here to here and then I'd have to break thread and wait until I roll to do from here to here and then a roll again and do from here to here. So loading your panel is all up to the design that is on your panel. So make sure you take a look at your panel before you load it. Make sure you know the distance in your throat space and how far you can quilt. So that way you can quilt efficiently without as many thread breaks. So I just wanted to make sure that that gets covered first because there's definitely, either way I load it, I'm gonna have thread breaks, but at this point, this will be less thread breaks. So let's get to quilting a panel and what I plan to do with this. Here we are up close at the panel and I plan to stitch in the ditch around this black border that goes around here. I also plan to stitch in this border around the top and the bottom and the sides, which is the print. This has no seams in it. This is actually the way the panel comes. So I'm going to be using my ruler foot and a ruler and my ruler base. So that way I can have a nice straight line that runs through this black and purple section. The next thing I plan to do is echo around all of this. Now this is where there's gonna be some thread breaks between all this section as much as I can quilt, but at least in my design, in all this purple blankness, I'm gonna do some not so perfect swirls on purpose because in the movie, if you've ever watched the movie, all the swirling and stuff that's in it is not perfect, as you can even see right here on this arch. It's just random, and so I'm gonna just do some random swirls in the background. That's gonna be done in purple thread. 
Then I'm going to change thread colors and I'm going to go to black. And I'm going to stitch in the ditch or what we call the ditch, but I'm going to echo or stitch around all the stuff that's on the inside. So that way, all of that stuff pops forward because it's just stitched around it inside the, the parameters of it. That way it gives it that look. So since there's a skull right there inside that one, and then there's like a thing inside that, I'm gonna quilt all that with black thread so that all that empty space pops forward. I am using an 80-20 batting. It's a little bit thicker, so that'll allow me to have a little bit more poof on all the places that I'm trying to make pop forward with this panel. So now that you know my design of echoing around everything, stitching around the head, I'm gonna stitch around his body in the purple, but I'll do a little bit of accents in all the black section as well. When I get to the ghost, he's just gonna have purple around him because I'm, I'm gonna try to just stick with purple and black. So like in his face, I can do his mouth with the black and around his eyes and his nose with the black. But around the face itself, I'm just gonna go ahead and stay with the purple. And then I'm gonna quilt in between all of this in there, all that fancy arch stuff on the fence. So that's my plan. Let's put the plan into action and I'm gonna show you working with rulers and stitching in a border that doesn't have a ditch. It's just built onto the panel, and then we'll move forward from there. Okay, so here we are. The first things first, I have everything basted down. So I have a basting stitch about a half an inch away from the edge, and then I go back and do it about a quarter inch away from the edge. Don't ask me why I do that. Honestly, I just like having a double basting stitch on my first pass. So the initial hook. I also, on my backing fabric, marked with chalk. I don't know if you can see that, but I marked with chalk where I wanted this to land because my backing fabric on this quilt is a giant four patch. And I wanted the center of the quilt lined up with the seam on the, cent on the center of the four patch as well as the two sides of the four patch, which I can't show you because those aren't even in view yet. I have to start stitching first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch with black in the ditch right here of this first border, which is the only border on this quilt. The rest, again, is built into the quilt. There is nothing there to separate. So I'm gonna go ahead and I don't stitch in the ditch perfectly, so don't judge, but we're gonna do this ditch first. Just grab yourself a nice straight edge ruler, butt it up, and follow that ditch. I'm stitching at 10 stitches per inch. Again, you can't even see my stitching, but I did go over because that happens. I'm also leaving, you see my starting thread right here? I'm gonna leave that attached there so that I know where I started for my next pass. So when this whole section I've got uh, visible on the long arm is quilted, that means my anything where I've left this, I know where I'm starting again because I am using a, con a thread that blends, not contrast. So I definitely wanna be able to see where I started and stopped. So again, I'm just stitching in the ditch or near it or as close to it as I can get. And then I'm just going to go along here as best as possible in that ditch all the way down. I notice I do a little bit better when I stitch in the ditch faster than when I stitch really slow. So if the camera shakes, I'm super sorry. And if I'm going too fast, I'm sorry for that as well. So my stitching is in the purple section right here. Again, I'm not perfect with stitching a ditch. I never have been. And I've been quilting for on long arms for six years, so... 
I don't know why I can't. I just can't. Even on a regular sewing machine, I can't. All right, so I'm going to break thread right here. And I'm going to leave a long tail so I can see where I need to start and stop again. So there's a tail just hanging there for now. All that stuff I'll trim away later. All right, so on to the border that is not a border. It's just built into the quilt. I'm going to stitch on both sides of it. So again, it's just the same as stitching in the ditch. I'm going to find the edge. And I'm more on the black than I am on the purple. And I'm going to attempt to stay that way. So I'm going to tie off my thread right here. I'm going to butt my ruler up to that. And I'm going to attempt to stay in the black with the black. So what would have been a ditch, I'm stitching in it. And I do it a little bit slower, at least on this section, until I get to here. And then I'll go a little bit faster. I usually go faster on stitching in the ditch when I go from left to right on my machine. Make sure you're holding your ruler nice and comfortably when you're doing stuff like this. Coming to this corner, dropping my needle in the corner before I adjust anything, and then stitching down. As far as I can go, now, instead of breaking the thread, I'm going to just tie it off, put my needle up, and come over to the other side of that ditch, and then tie it off again. So the only thing I'll have to do later is get rid of this little attachment thread. I'll just have to remove that thread right there on the front and on the back. So now I'm just going to go the other direction. So again, in my pretend ditch, right up to this edge, turn the ruler, and now I'm going the opposite direction. Staying in my invisible ditch. I'm lining my ruler up pretty much a quarter inch away from the edge. You guys cannot see that in this angle. And I accidentally stitched in the purple again. So you can see in this angle that I'm a quarter inch away from the edge. I make sure that I hold that there. And then I'm going to stop right here. And I am going to break thread finally, tying it off. Again, I'm just going to leave myself a tail so that I can see where my thread ends. So that I know where to start the next. So now I'm still connected with black thread. So the first thing I'm going to do is see how far down I can go in my throat space. So I can go as far down as right here. So I can get this whole entire tombstone done first. And then the chimney, or the chimney, the, I guess, a uh, brick stance that holds this, uh, what would be metal work, I guess, that. I can do this side of it right here, but I can't fill anything in uh, and make the brick look brickier. <laughs> Is that a word, brickier? But I can at least start with this. So I'm going to go around this side of it and do that whole entire tombstone as well. I'm going to leave the thread here, obviously, so that I can see. And I'm just going to use my ruler to stitch sort of good. So I'm just kind of pushing the ruler against it, following around. I'm going to go around this completely. 
I'm also going to do the echo part of it. Alright, lining my ruler this direction. Change the directions as often as I need to. Go around the whole entire thing. So I'm going to do the inside and the shadowing, which is the side of this. And then I'll come inside of it as well. So I'm going to do, again, this part. Sometimes I freehand it like you can see I'm doing right now. So I'm going to come back around it, try to stitch where I've already stitched. I'm going to do the shadowing part now. And you can see there's a little ripple right here. I'm going to do that. Come down here. Match that up. Come back down. Follow it around here. Come around this curve, and then I'm going to come in here. I'm going to freehand around all this because I'm just making it look like it's puffy. And I'm going to attempt not to break thread. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to, so I'm just going to cross over to right here. I just tie it off and cross over and go around this thing. I'm going to pop over to the inside of it. I'm just going to break the thread again. I'll snip all these little threads apart later. eyes. It's just like snipping away connecting threads on the embroidery machine, honestly. Okay, we're going to go ahead and skip over here to the letters. Tie it off, go to the next. Panels are pretty much outlining whatever you wish to highlight on the panel. So right here, it's just like doing bubble letters, honestly. So I'm just outlining things to make them pop. And it doesn't have to be perfect, because nobody's perfect with this, especially me. I just want to have fun. Do the inside of the O. And then the outside of it. Again, all of my connecting threads will be taken off after the fact. Now I got to do the inside of this. I'll come back to the ruler. I'm going to do both the shadowing and the outside. So I'm going to do the outside first. And it looks like it comes down. I'm trying to follow it around as best as... Stitch on top of itself to come back down this way. Meet that up. I'm also going to do this fence while I'm here. See, I'm going to go over and do the other fence. Just stitching over to it, following my previous line.
I probably should have used the ruler for this. <laughs> Keep myself a little bit steadier. Go down this. I'm going to cross over to the inside. go. Anything else that I missed? I don't see anything else. Again, I'm going to use purple on that top portion. I'm also going to echo in all that with purple as well. So this, I'm not going to go around with the black. I'm only going around the outside in the purple section. So it looks like I can switch out now to my purple thread. And I'm also going to advance the quilt because I've already stitched here. So now I need to just bring it down a little bit more so I have a little bit more space here. So I'm going to advance it to where this section right here is probably the only thing that's visible. So you're probably thinking to yourself, Tiffany, why didn't you just do all of the black first? Advance it, do more black, advance it, do more black problem with doing that is I find, this is my personal opinion, some people might think it's different for themselves, but I find that when you do the one color first, which is barely any quilting on a panel, and you do all that first, when you come back to the top again to do that next color and load that next color, what I find is I get puckering. The panel ends up puckering, shifting, and moving because I've rolled it and only done a slight amount of quilting, not within the batting's recommendation of quilting. So then it rolls up under this bar, it gets all puckered, and as soon as things start rolling, it just starts puckering up like crazy. So that is why I just swap colors while I'm still in that section and get all that work done. That way it pushes all this down and everything has the recommended amount of quilting within that space for that batting's recommendation. That way my panel does not pucker. So now I'm advanced a little bit and now I can go to about right here as you can see so I can get this whole side with whatever I want to quilt in it. So I'm actually just stitching on the outside probably about an eighth of an inch away from the uh, this, I guess, wrought iron um, arch thing. So I'm going to tie my thread off. Obviously, I'm going to leave the tail, same as I did before. And this, I'm just going to do my best to freehand the whole entire thing. So just going around the whole entire thing. Trying to stay off the black as much as possible, but unfortunately, that is not going to be easy. Oh, and I'm having some thread issues, so give me a second. Sometimes I have issues, and today's issue was my actual thread that comes down to the machine wrapped itself around, even with a thread net, wrapped itself around the actual uh, thread hooker thing. The thing that you put the thread spool on, the base. Wow, that was so weird. Sometimes that happens, though. All right, where am I at? Here we go. So here I am close to Jack's arm. So I'm just going to go on the outside of that. I'm going to do my best to stay completely away from it. 
Now I'm going to echo around the outside of what I've already stitched on the chimney. Not chimney. Why do I keep saying chimney? Because it looks like a chimney of the brick stance thing. So that way I'm at like a quarter inch or ish somewhere around there on the outside of all this. It's going to tell me where I need to stop when I do my other quilting, which will be in this background. So I'm going to tie off right here. I'm just going to fill in right here. Tie off right here. Fill in right here. Tie off right here. Come over here. And one more section right here. I know it seems like a lot of tie offs, but again, I said in the beginning with panels, there is a lot of thread breaks. All right, so I'm going to just slide, leaving that connected to right here and do this little section down at the bottom. And then completely tie off. And by the way, the color I'm using is Glide Lilac and Glide Black. I'm going to go ahead and cut that away now because it doesn't matter if that's there or not. All right, so now that I got all that echoed around, I need to come in here and do more. I'm just gonna do all these sections as far as my throat space will allow. Oh, I was able to get that whole thing right there, yay. Tie it, come over to this area, and I'm not being super perfection about this, I'm just getting as much as I can. In these sections, I'm going to follow this one back around, cross over, work in here. Tie off, go right here, tie off, if you've ever done embroidery, it usually ties off and then you have to get rid of those tie offs anyway, so... So this is my throat space right here. Can't go any further. I'm gonna come right here. Fill in right here. Meet back up with this and just keep going. So I'm gonna put most of this in Fast forward for a minute while I continue getting all this stuff done and then I'll come back when I do my background swirls. Worth. So you can just hide while I work 
I ain't tired, you first. I'll write a second, third verse. About the lies you go disperse. You never did sh I know it hurts. But something deep inside won't let me quit. I swear that I'm inspired by all this shit. Tell me that I can't and I won't. That's what guides me the most. You lies, I'll do what I want. Okay, I have did my best to go around all of this. So it's all stitched down. It's not perfect, it never is, not with any panel that I've ever done. Now I'm gonna go through and just do those weird spirals throughout whatever I can get in this section. So, and you can see I haven't quilted right here yet in this black on both sides, but I can still go in here and do the purple stuff. So I'm actually gonna connect it to an end where there was a start and stop already. And now I'm just gonna do not perfect. Like a spiral. throughout this whole section. They're not together, they don't match up. Not the same size.
Okay, so now all I did was funky little swirls all in this section, and then I went around and echoed it on the outer side of the outside and on the inside to just fill in that space. As you can see, they are not perfect. In the movie, all of the swirly type stuff that they put on the screen is just funky swirls. <laughs> they don't match. They're not equal in proportion. I think there's only one scene where the one uh, character comes in and it has the spiral uh, thing with the red spiral circle on it. I think that's the only scene that there's like an almost perfect circle and even that doesn't, it's almost, like I said. So, oh, and I just realized that I forgot a space of echoing right here. But anyway, so that is definitely the highlight is just adding all that. So now I can actually advance a little bit and start working on the black color more. So I'm just going to grab my black and I'm actually going to finish around this side of the chim... Uh, I said it again, chimney. It's not a chimney. Um, I'm actually going to go around the inside of this pillar. That's, a, that's the word. It's a pillar that holds this. <laughs> so I'm going to actually go in here with the black and just you can I'm going to make it look like brick which is what it is and then I'll go around this as well crossing over so that this you know shadowing is highlighted on there I don't know what really that is supposed to be but I'm going to go around that um, and my next pass I'll be able to get this tombstone in it uh, down here in this I guess would be rocky smoky um, there's a word for it, but this <laughs> smoky rock section, uh, I don't know. I think I'm just going to take black thread, honestly, and do some squiggly lines. That's probably what I'll do is just kind of, you know, back and forth like this with the black, just to, you know, make it look wavy, I guess is the word. I think that's what I'll do in this section because, again, I don't want to add any more color. I'm just going with purple and black for everything. So I'm going to advance the quilt. I'm going to stitch in my pretend ditch in the section now that will be in my advance, as well as going around the pillar and doing Jack's eyes will be in the next pass, um, doing inside of his, uh, I forgot what that's called, but there's a cat right there. A cat eye thing I'll go around that uh, I think I'll even just go around his face with the black not the purple um, and his neck with the black so that way it separates him and all his parts and pieces with the black but I'm actually not stitching in this section of him I'm gonna leave that blank I know I probably did a lot more detail right here in this section than I would have anywhere else. But um, I'm going to advance it just a little. So that, uh, actually, I don't really need to advance it, I guess, to do some spiralies right here in this section. So I guess I'll just go ahead and do that before I go ahead and put this all in fast forward. And you can see I just went around it, and I'm going to echo it just in this area just to make it look, I don't know, a little bit more swirly. I'm going to come over here and do this little section while I have the purple. All right, so that section is now complete. Um... I don't think I need to get too particular, <laughs> like with all this little stuff. Uh, but I can go around this one on the inside of it because I didn't do that, but I did do the other one. So I might as well do this one too. There we go. That way that part's stitched down. And then snip that away. So I think I've gotten all the purple that I can reach. So I'm going to go ahead now and swap back to black and do all my black stuff. I'm going to put you in fast forward so that you can see the rest of this panel actually being quilted. 
um, at the same time in this video. So I hope you enjoy it. It's going to go about three times faster than what I am at this point, just so that you can see the whole thing being done. So here we go.
Okay, so there it is, all complete. You can see, since I changed it to a vertical position, why the panel would have been harder to do this way. So I was able to only have to do three passes this way. If I would have went the other direction, my space, again, wouldn't have been enough. I would have ran out of room a lot faster and I would have had more starts and stops on the back and forth, you know, with every roll. So I would have had one, two, three, four, five, six, because I would have had to go back and forth again at this section, probably seven passes in this direction. I was able to do the squigglies down here at the bottom. You kind of probably can't see those on camera, but I was able to do those just by going, you know, a third of the way, then I stopped, and then I continued on the third of the way, stopped, and then continued on the rest of the way. So it worked out perfectly. Again, you did see it does start and stop a lot. I keep those threads attached. 90% of the time, I pluck all the little threads that connect everything while I'm stitching. So I'll like stop this section and I'll trim away all those little pieces. I'd try to do the top all the way with the connector threads as much as I can while it's on the frame. And then when I take it off, I work on the back and snipping away all those threads. But so far, it looks amazing. Let's take a closer look at the quilting. You can see already just right here, it's puffing out. You can see the puff out that's created if you look at it. Now let's take that closer look. Again, I only used 80-20 on this. So it's only one layer. It's not super thick, but it's not super thin. And I think that that puff that was created like around his face, you can feel it. His eyeballs are sticking out. His face is sticking out. His chest plate is sticking out. All those areas that are quilted back here pushed all that down so you can see that it's lifted all this out. So it's it's very noticeable, I think. Um, the brickwork is gone all the way around, so that looks amazing. And let's see, what else is um, noticeable? There's not much quilting. In this section, I didn't quilt. I left the ghost dog, I forgot his name, Zero, I think. His, he's open right here, but I did kind of give his little accent of the purple. But I didn't quilt anything in this section because that's just the city and that's supposed to be sitting far away. Um, if you're looking at the panel, that's like the back, back, back far woods, you know. So I'm keeping the city far away by not quilting anything there. Uh, all of the, um, what are they called? Tombstones are quilted. Again, there's a lot of emptiness, so that way it still creates that puff. But I did do around the eyes and the skull and around the R-I-P, around the cross, and around, uh, well, there's zero right there. <laughs> His little uh, thing right there. And then this one didn't have anything in it either. So I did go around those. And again, those are those wavy lines across the bottom that kind of just give that look of like a fog or a mist coming up over rock at the graveyard. So I think it looks fabulous. I love it. And um, I can't wait to get it bound. In. I don't know what color to bind it in at the moment, but I still either way can't wait to bind it. I'm probably going to dig through my stash and see if I have a dark purple. If not, I'll just go with black because black works with anything that has black in it as binding. So. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed today's video on how to long arm quilt a panel, at least my way of thinking. That's how I do panels. I like to custom them. It's very rare. I've done it a few times because that's what my clients want, but it's very rare that I actually just do an all over edge to edge running through a panel. That's just not what I like to do. I think the panels need to come forward and all those elements need to be brought to light so that it looks a little more, I don't know, just looks awesome. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know a word for that, but so 
Anyways, thanks for watching. Again, I appreciate you guys being here for today's video, and I hope you learned something. So I'm gone. I'm, I'm getting out of here. So bye. See ya later. So today's lesson on the long arm is where we. Blah, 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 blah.